All right. So we're going to switch to, to pigs now from uh, chickens to pigs. Again, this is out of the Chesapeake Bay program. Um, and actually, uh, the, the money is funneled through Virginia Tech, and that's they, they have a call for expert panels. That, that system is actually defunct now. They're not doing, they're going back the old way and having a political, have a different one. It's not going to change there. But I know I'm not going to worry about it. Again, this is the expert panel. Uh, Tang, this report is now being held up where the, the modelers are putting together their technical appendix. And I'm, my guess is it's going to be another couple, at least one year, maybe two years before it's finally out. Arogos, who I was actually using the data for the turkeys, is still not out. And it was, it was initiated like 12 years ago. So that's the way these things go. Again, these are the, the expert panel. And for this particular, for the swine, Tang did all of the uh, literature search on the mortality rates and that sort of thing. So if you have any questions about that, I, you still have time to come up here and give the talk if you want to, Tang, but I didn't think you want to. Um, and then Rob Minan helped us out with looking at production flow in the Chesapeake Bay, which is a little bit different than what we're used to in the Midwest particularly on the size and the finishing weights of the pigs. Uh, again, if you're here for the first one, what the Bay really wanted to know was on a per farm basis, how many nutrients could they expect to potentially get into the Chesapeake Bay for mortalities. And for swine, uh, they actually break out swine between breeding and uh, they call it hogs for slaughter. So for based on a, basically the finishing part of hog production for a 270 pound market hog, which is how light they, they raise them in Pennsylvania, you get about 1.5 pounds of nit nitrogen per animal unit, thousand pounds of animals on uh, pig space, I guess you'd say. And again, if you're listening to the first one, First talk, this is a relatively small amount of nutrients that could potentially enter the bay. So probably the best um, advice our expert panel is uh, we'll, get, we'll let them decide whether it's even worth worrying about this minuscule amount of nutrients in the next reiteration of their model. Um, now, one I, I forgot, to, you know, we, we found that was, I mean, that's something that was kind of a unique uh, finding, but the problem with mortalities really isn't the nutrients anyway. It's the biosecurity, the nuisance conditions um, that are really important, but that's not what the, pay, the Bay was, was paying us to do. So for estimating routine swine mortality masses, you really need to understand, really need to understand the, the concept of product flow, of uh, how little pigs move through the system to become big pigs. So for, and if you take a 25, if we have a production model so that we're gonna try to market 25,000 finishers at 270 pounds at the end of a year, and it's usually two and some odd turns per year. We, uh, if you looked at inventory, which is actually what the ag census shows you, um, you would start out with a mother herd of about 1,150 sows, okay? In Oklahoma, almost, well, that's a really small sow farm now. We're 2,500 or larger, generally. And that's the trend that they're going in the Bay also, mostly in southeastern Pennsylvania where the industry's um, located. So based upon production data that they have out of Pennsylvania, we can assume to have 25,000 uh, market hogs per year, we'll have 150 replacement gilts in the same ferret finish system ready to go, uh, 12 boars. Uh, pigs that are born dead aren't inventory. They're already composted or whatever. 2,000 wean pigs, 3,900, 970. At any given time, if you walk on a ferret to finish farm, that's the in inventory you would see. Okay. For the breeding stock, and this came out of the another Chesapeake Bay 
expert panel publication that Maiden was part of. He was actually the co-chair of. These are the weights, the typical weights that you would see in the bay, okay? And they're fairly similar to what you'd see in Missouri or in Arkansas or in Oklahoma. And we used a blanket death rate of 7.8%, and that came out of APHIS, an annual death rate. So if you take that back to this mark, this uh, product flow, we can expect 90 sows to die in any given year. And the average weight at, when they die is 450 pounds. So you're gonna have 40,000 pounds of dead sows. So our farms are twice that large. You could have 80,000 pounds of dead sows, 40,000 tons, 40 tons of dead sows per year. Okay, the uh, pigs are, are light, like the uh, chickens or the broilers. They don't grow in a linear fashion. We have this, everything in nature follows a sinusoidal curve. Uh, they grow quickly in the middle and toward the end, you're mostly putting on fat. Okay, we also looked at the cumulative mortalities, and this comes at the, the pig industry, unlike the poultry industry, has lots of data on their mortalities. It's reported as part of the, the pork checkoff program. So this is pretty good data. This is all post-PEDV. So our pre-wean mortalities and the born dead may be kind of high. If you went back in the 90s, they wouldn't be this high. So this is based on an annual mortality. The finishers tend to die like the, the big chicken, the big broilers, they tend to die at a greater rate toward the end of their productive life. So you could actually bend that finisher curve. So combining those two curves again, like we did with the broilers, this is what we, for our growing stock, this is the cumulative death weight. So all those born dead, are going to give us for that 25,000, excuse me, for a thousand pigs, um, a certain percentage were born dead, and that's going to be about 500 pounds of dead baby pigs. Okay. And then cumulative life during the, uh, the pre wean is going to be a little bit more than that. Nursery, about 2,000 pounds per 1,000 head starting. We're starting every Every phase of production starts back at 1,000 because we're generally working on multi-site uh, farms. So each one of these is assuming we're back with 1,000 pigs. The ones that died before, we start them all over again, and we start with another 1,000. So if you go back to the production flow graph, these numbers, we don't have animals dying as numbers. We do actually have animals. When you get to the expert panel, if you, when you get the uh, report, it report animals dying, and that caused a lot of confusion uh, when we were reporting this. Basically, the animals dying are going to be 1,500, so we're just reducing it every time. But anyway, you don't need to worry about that. You take those curves. We started out with uh, 2,000 wean pigs. We are going to produce from those wean pigs while they're weaning and going to the nursery. You'll have 3,000 pounds on an annual basis that you're gonna to have to deal with. Add all those up for, if you had a fair to finish operation with 1,150 sows, you would have a little bit more than 400,000 pounds of deads to deal with in a year, okay? Uh, we don't have hardly any fair to finish, uh, even in the Bay, they don't have fair to finish operations They've gone uh, almost completely integrated systems with multi-site production. So in the report, we also broke it down in the different types of farms you're gonna have. It's pretty easy to do. You just slice off that part of that production unit, divide it by a thousand or whatever you're gonna deal with. Um, one thing that I will mention is that almost, if you look at it on a fair to finish basis, on a aerial population basis, I guess you will, more than half of the dead production comes from that finisher unit. That's taking that 50 pound pig all the way up to 270. A lot of them are dying. 
and they're dying when they're almost 250, 270 pounds. So this data is, gonna, is in the report. It's also, I think this graph exactly is in the abstract. Um, yesterday, we, if those of y'all that were on the treatment system, they have a, um, the Cooper's uh, integrator was the Cooper. I can't remember the, the, the farmer's name, but anyway, they have weaned to finish pigs. They don't, they don't have a nursery phase in between, but in the report, we also have it reported for weaned to finish. Next. Again, um, about the only disposal methods that are disposal, disposal is going to be incineration and composting burial on some of the larger animals. When you get that 700 pound boar, probably you're going to bury him, but you may only have one or two a year at the most. Incineration, it's kind of for the nursery finishers, it's like the broilers. You're just going to need a bigger incinerator. You're going to have to get whatever it takes to get that last week of production done. And nurseries uh, are going to die at a fairly constant rate. If you're dealing with breeding stock, you need to size it for that largest single day plus the largest animal you think might die that day. And you also need to think about the afterbirth. That's a considerable amount of material that we didn't consider in this model, by the way. Uh, if anybody wants to see some interesting research, it would be how much afterbirth, the weight of afterbirth per baby pig. It's probably out there. I don't know if anybody's reported it. It's probably out there. And that's generally when, they're, when, the, when the South Farm managers are dealing with stuff, that's the nastiest stuff they have to deal with on top of that. So bin composters, kind of the same deal. Um, you're going to have to accommodate that largest grow out plus the uh, after birth. I don't know why it's going up there. And you're going to, we still do the layering with the baby pigs in particular. We're going to layer them up. At least that's the way we operate. Um, out of Illinois, there's a lot of research on the, the uh, aerated system. And I think outside there's a vendor that's showing aerated system too. We, have a, we now have a lot of rotating drums, at least in our part of the world. And again, you want to have that 20 days to kill all the viruses. You want to have an elevated temperature for at least 20 days. And mixed that entire time. The same with the bins. Research needs, again, like to be able to know if the numbers we came up with were anywhere close to what they, they really are. Um, one thing that's probably different particularly for the broilers more, more than the, um, the pigs, is they probably don't grow as fast and they die more than what the companies are suggesting. So there's probably some adjustment to that. With that, this is my dog, Boomer. I have three children. Uh, this is my dog, Boomer. And uh, he'll answer any questions you have. Or I'll answer in his, his absence. But he didn't show like, that was for the breeding stock. We, I'll repeat the question. She asked, uh, we didn't show the mortality rate for the, all of the pigs. The, the 7.8 was strictly for the, for the breeding stock, the boars, the sows, and the gilts, the full-grown ones. And that was APHIS data that's been around for a while. All the other ones, the, uh, the nurseries, the pre-wean, the, um, the finishers, I think they even broke it down to grow and finishers. It comes from the pork checkoff. The dead pigs, I actually forget. I think there was some national pork data, more data on, um, on uh, number of pigs we, number of pigs born and then number of pigs alive. So that's where I came up with that percentage, just subtracted. It's actually a considerable number. And, and our, our farmers are always about having to deal with the mummies. So that's something you can't forget. 